The chestnut tree forests cover about 2.5 million hectares in Europe today, while in Romania they cover only some 2,500 hectares, mainly in certain areas of a few hundred hectares in Maramureș and Gorj counties. The chestnut is mainly present in only 280 hectares in Tismana Forestry District and its surroundings. The chestnut tree was identified here around the year 570 AD. The edible chestnut tree might have been brought and planted in the region by the monks coming from south of the Danube, together with Saint Nicodem, to found Tismana Monastery in the 14th century. From here the edible chestnut tree spread out in all directions, but it survived only on the mountain feet made of limestone rocks and favoured by the sub-Mediterranean climate that existed here. Unfortunately, whole parts of the forests in the region started disappearing. The chestnut tree began being attacked a few decades ago by the fungus of Asian origin called Cryphonectria parasitica. In popular terms, the disease is called the bark cancer. The fungus multiplies very fast and violently attacks the trunk and branches of the forest stands. The fungus-covered surface gets dry and dies, while the bark breaks away and falls. The fungus multiplies quite quickly, resulting in a great number of spores, which are spread by the wind, insects and rain. The invasion of the Asian fungus led to the mass dying of chestnut tree forests in America, Europe and minor Asia. In Romania, it caused the total drying of chestnut tree woods in the regions of Baia Mare and Tismana, while the habitat and the species are in danger of extinction. The fungus killed all the mature chestnut trees so that it led to a powerful destructuring of the chestnut tree stands. In time, there were identified specific microviruses of the Asian fungus called CHV1 to a CHV4, which have the capacity of reducing the virulence of the pathogen. Based on them, the method of biological control against the chestnut tree disease was developed. And so, the bark cancer is controlled through injecting in the fungus-infected areas of a hypovirulent virus. Practically, the virus destroys the fungus naturally, being excluded any intervention with chemical substances. The salvage came from the project funded equally by the European Commission through Life, Nature and Biodiversity Programme and by the Romanian government with a total budget of almost 2 million euros. A first step in this project consists in the ecological reconstruction of 100 hectares of chestnut tree forest with biological treatments as compared to 60 hectares initially suggested for healing the bark cancer of the habitat number 9260 in the region of Tismana, Gorj County. The action is based on the European experience in developing and applying the biological control. In spring, the cleaning of the bark cancer in the affected areas is of utmost importance. The young offspring sprouting among the dry trunks are monitored carefully. The chestnut tree and its habitat implicitly survived only due to regenerations from undergrowth and, more rarely, from chestnuts. The seasons have gained new valences in the dynamics of the rescue project of the edible chestnut tree of Tismana. The fungus devastated the forests of any age, including old trees which are monuments of nature two or three hundred years old. But their roots didn't die 
and these abundantly sprouted, while the drying and the reduction of fruit happened gradually, which allowed both the exceptional regeneration from the undergrowth and the natural regeneration from seeds. The particular efficiency of the biological control leads to the recovery of the chestnut underbrush, but these procedures have to be carried out with perseverance in the future too. Ensuring the homogeneity of the inoculated trees with a hypovirus, which requires opening access corridors in all the chestnut underbrush. That's why there were suggested a few demonstrative activities in the project, based on the improved methods of cultivation, which should diversify practicability and ensure some extra safety in recovering the chestnut tree habitat. Consequently, there were introduced demonstrative methods such as bedding chestnuts underground in winter, sowing chestnuts in plastic bags, planting seedlings in greenhouse conditions, setting one-year-old seedlings with protected roots, looking for chestnut tree specimens resistant to Cryphonectria parasitica. The forestry works as a part of an integrated control aim to reduce the potential for infection both by removing the infected specimens and by increasing the resistance of the chestnut stands. That is why all the works to stimulate the natural regeneration, to tend the seeds, to clear the thicket, to clean the area with prout, aim besides eliminating sick chestnut trees to increase the proportion of specimens coming from healthy seeds. We return to the chestnut tree forest in full autumn. The area affected by the bark cancer undergoes a different treatment. The dry chestnut trees that remained in the forest rot standing or have already fallen, constituting a pest hole with the fungus and also a danger of injury for the tourists crossing the wood looking for chestnuts or mushrooms. Foresters come to offer a helping hand and the forest is carefully sanitized. Each clean sector is photographed and monitored in order to check the regeneration power of the destroyed forest. The next step of the project is to regenerate the edible chestnut tree plantation by planting the seedlings obtained from the local seeds. The grounds to be afforested belong both to the state, administered by the Rob Silva National Agency of Forests, through the Forestry Administration of Gorsh County, and to the private property of the people in Tismana region. The chestnut tree plantations of the selected areas comprise a series of activities of physical and technical undertaking, such as the removal of unwanted vegetations, whether grass, brush or trees, picketing, preparing the ground in hotbeds, manually digging of holes, transporting the seedlings and the plantation of the chestnut tree seedlings. 
The plantations were permanently monitored in order to assess the state of the seedlings in all the periods, especially in those critical. Although access is difficult in the seed beds set up in autumn, they are periodically visited. The snow layer helps to protect the plants. The chestnut tree is sensitive to frosts and to late freezing temperatures of minus 25 degrees Celsius. Hotbeds planted in autumn are lightly uncovered of the snow which protects the already vigorous seedlings. Well hidden, the chestnut buds rise from the snow, meaning that the plantation will easily grow in the next season. In spring, the specific forestry works are continued, planting the seedlings and filling up the gaps. During the visits on the ground of the technical staff of implementation checking, it is assessed the way of carrying out the project and the state of plantations, establishing the necessary administrative measures for each area. Finally, the hard work in the hotbeds and forests led to the creation of over 38.5 hectares of chestnut tree plantations, compared to 25 hectares proposed in the project, scattered over more areas where once the species was towering. These are nuclei of hope for this rare species, loved by the native inhabitants for its special qualities. The best construction wood, a great and constant production of fruit, honey with particular properties. Another section of the project aims at restoring 10 hectares of Pinus mugol and Rhododendron myrtifolium shrubs on Osler Massif. The shrubs, popularly called mountain pines, located in habitat number 4070, which is a priority at European level, 
are planted in areas affected by deforestation in order to create grassland in subalpine and alpine regions. The phenomenon took place at national and European level, and under the circumstances, the erosion of the soil in the alpine and subalpine area is very active, while the vegetation is scarce. The isolated mountain pine bushes, scattered thinly in protected places by rocks or small valleys in the alpine and subalpine regions, confirm the natural spreading of the habitat in the past. Now, the last stage of the project can be carried out, consisting in developing the suitable infrastructure for protecting and controlling tourism, with the purpose of reducing and eliminating the negative impact of mass tourism and activities that hinder the rehabilitated habitats. Thus, there have been built six camping sites with facilities for civilized ecological tourism and two information centers located on the three valleys that cross the site of the western north gorge, respectively Bistrica, Tismana and Motrusek, where the habitats have been restored in the current project. The tourist routes have been marked and indicators were set up in the corresponding camping areas. The activity was coordinated by the Agency for Protecting the Environment in Gorsh County within the LIFE project 11NAT-ROW-A25.